gave you a new plaque for your production uh, manager, what director? Thank yeah. You. Oh, we never showed. There's the a lot of complicated moving parts can here, I, can Jamie. Can I show your director thing? Hey, hey cameraman, can you show this? Remember our 100 episode? It's official. 100 episode, I made these special things for... That's my name badge. I'm trying to figure out how I mount it. It's hard to see. I'm trying to figure out how I mount it on my chest, how but I'm going to. Well, I, I think I get a rope that goes around it and wear it like bling. So it's it's glass. It's got J. It says Jeff Young, Norman's podcast director. So um, Jeff is official now. I don't have to put him to school. So you need to work hard at night to make sure you um, excel in your directorship. But anyway, hi, my name is Jamie Fang. We're hosted at Norman's Orchids in Montclair, California. Um, you can subscribe to our channel or have your friends subscribe once they are not in the US or not in our group. So earlier, on, was earlier without the voice on? It wasn't on? Uh-oh, so this was on the plant. <laughs> So today I got special, special master, master, <laughs> 老师, 老师 in Chinese is master of orchids, right? And she's official, look, she's got a beautiful, I cut up yet, a beautiful hand painted orchid bib. Anyway, so earlier this, I see it's repotting time. This now is repotting time. Uh, up potting, repotting. So I said, let's show everybody what we're doing, and maybe just toss these out for twelve fifty for division that you guys could have another plant at home. So this was this earlier. So we just took out the cakey part, and then you can keep your original plant. And I have my wire. This is what I use at home. I just kind of hook these um, in our house. I, you want to show more? Okay, here. Okay, can can. Could get Roger, can you see? Okay. And then take out, yeah, okay, come on, come through here. Yeah, show them. Where do you take out ice? Take off here. Yeah, okay, come on, camera, cut. You know? Yeah. Hold on. It doesn't be, make sure you hold this. Yeah. You want a scissors? I said, well, no, don't do Yeah, you just hold the stem, otherwise, it's going to break the original stem. Right? I, yeah. There you go. See? Very gently. And then, one more? You want to use a blade? I said, Oh, you're going to cut the whole stem? Wow. <gasps> I just cut the. So, what is that? Is, this, is that going to live? Dry, trash? Trash. Oh, wow. Hold on. I need my heart medication. <laughs> this is another Norman. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, no, that's no good, Ayi? No, no good. No, no good. Can I see? So Auntie said no good. Can we just plant it? Come, you little baby. You take off. Long when? time baby coming. Oh, Auntie says a very long time, but more than nine months. We're used to waiting nine months nine for babies. Nine months. Uh, no, this is going to be like two years. Oh, screw that. Trash. Throw trash. It out. Trash. Okay. You want to? I know everybody wants to save everything, but that's focused on the long haul. Um, save stuff that what you want to grow, not waste your time on things that you should thrash, okay? I know we want to save the world, but we can't. So here we go, another one. Hold on, let me show you. See how beautiful the plant is? Uh, lots of cakey everywhere. So you want to cut again? Oh, there we go, empty cut. I usually break, but empty just chop. I put it inside, uh, dough inside, another inside, cut dough. Oh, you cut so the roots too? Cut, yeah. If they're too long? Haircut. Chop. Oh, haircut. haircut. That's a good thing. Haircut. So obviously we just made a lot of little baby plants. This is too small, right? Too small will wait. Okay. How so long? Why is it too small? Uh, the, the plant is too small. You can let it mature off the main plant to get a little so bit of growth. When, when do you tell? Is it because the roots or is it because the, the, plant the leaves coming small. up? So it's like premature babies. It could go out and be incubated. Right, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out mother. how do you know, like, is it the roots need to be longer or the plant needs to be taller? Um, this the kiki is not you're about the Bailey, that three inch rule thing. This is the kiki plant's too small. Okay. You know, if, yep. it's, if it'll survive better and faster on the mother plant than incubator, like premature baby. So That's don't force it to be separate until it. it's ready. Yeah, I don't want to do it because I'm doing it right now kind of thing. 
Again, these are great baskets to have, and it's airy. Here's another one. See, nurseryman's job is never done. So look, this is very unruly. Can I just yeah. break? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna break. But when you break, you gotta hold the stem, okay? Yeah. Hold it, hold and it. then break. There you go. Oh, yeah. Wow. This one we could save, no? Yeah, or trash? Save, I save. think it's okay. So here we go, but then I could break this one too. See, these are a lot bigger. Then see the difference in the cake plant? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, so Rector is getting front row seat today. <laughs> so here, I paid this extra. cakey <laughs> versus this cakey. It's just so little, but it's in a banana. Oh, too small. Too yeah, so you hold it again on your man plant and just break. Yeah. See, I'm a number one student. I, he's been teaching me for the years. Hold the stem, break. Right? Right? Yeah. So, of course, um, we let it naturally air dry. We usually just put in a whole tray with a whole bunch of name that we pre printed and let it air dry. Right? You guys generally just sell the plant with all the kikis on it, though, right? I mean, very yeah, seldom usually, do I ever see you guys breaking yeah, off kikis have and time, trying to. But for this class, because we know people right. are going to have. This but I've never seen pain. you guys, I've never seen Norman walk around saying, oh, I'm going to get some more plants like this. Well, sometimes when there's a good plant, and we see Kiki Kiki, we break it off so we could have one, you right. know, and then we'll save sell one. the save yeah. one or two. Yeah. So, and so you say, look, the, hold on, the roots is too long. There's no point in planting it or rod. So go ahead and just do a cut. What are you looking for? Like three inches, three and a half inches there of roots? Three inch. Just whatever will support in the root system. Right? Too much is not is not necessary good. So see, you got new growth coming out already. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And then this, yeah, this is, um, yeah, don't plant right away. So that's what I said. Usually we put it in a tray and tomorrow or two days later we'll pot. So this is what you do with the dendrobium when you have a keiki. Then of course you up pot this to a larger pot. So I, are these dead? No, they're not dead. They're a little bit soft, but they're not dead. Not dead. No, not dead. This one's dead, so we could cut it off. Here, let's do a cleaning. Let's do a good cleaning game. I'm going to cut off. I have to explain. So let's do a cleaning. Today we're very honored to have Auntie wanting, willing to do this for us. So you can go like this. Uh, let me get you scissors. Here, hi. This, yeah, this is just cut this, huh? So we're just going through and cut, obviously, the dead growth. These are really shrivel. We're going to go in and cut it. Are you going to do division or just pot the whole plant? Yeah. For for you as a hobbyist, we suggest you just plant it upsize it. You don't for us commercially we could chop it to three plants, right? But you want to clean plants off really good. This is pretty this is no good kiki. Can we just gonna pinch it off? There goes IE cutting it. Here's oh this one's good wait. We'll wait on this one. What about this one's no good? This is pretty dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Came off. But it'll be okay. Put in a little tiny pot. This one is at least better than what we got here going on, right? This one kind of just came off while we're cleaning the other one. So when you do this, you want to clean up as much as you can. So we already cut all the dead ones. Here goes. This one's dead too. Let's get down to the other look at this. But be careful with your blade. <laughs> you have to use this. 
Yeah, try not to use these blades because for a dendrobium is hard, you will cut yourself. I don't have the right tool today, obviously. It's like these are pretty dead. There's no point on um, leaving it on there. And here's another cake you will leave it on. Is it big enough? Oh, actually, you could do the long ways. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, then you could plant it. Actually, it's already fallen off. Okay. So basically, the idea is clean everything. So we're not going to touch this one, no? You want to do it sideways? You don't want it? No. Like this one, we could plant sideways, no? Yeah. Down. You could actually plant it this way versus try to go this way. This is dead. It's got nothing. <laughs> Roger was like, I got the right clipper on my side. <laughs> so here you go. Here's one you're going to plant this way down. Okay, so ideally, now you got a big plant, you want to clean it up really good. And then you could just pot it. If you're going to bark, you're going to have to just, just um, submerge this for about half an hour. Then you can loosen up the moss if you're going into moss. Um, the the moss is still good. Okay, you don't want to follow the moss. But then you could do the wrap around like I showed you before. Yeah, just wrap it into a bigger pot, okay? But if you go and bark, you're going to have to wait and then submerge it and just take all the moss out. Okay, so we will have cuttings for this for the jumper for people to start. Are you still working on foil? So when you get it next week, this will be like a good way for fun thing for you guys to start to see if you can even grow dendrobium or whatsoever. So, oh, this one might How be can you tell if moss is still good? Um, when it's not black and decayed, usually. That's a good in indication. Thanks for the question. That's a good question. And again, when you get plants in freshly new moss, you know, um, it's not always a good thing. It's either they just got bare rooted into the seeds and they pot it up for you. Um, So usually, this is what my mom used to do. Um, hi, Tom. We have a special guest today, Tom, our new member. You say hi, Tom. Tom is our new member. Very Fortunate happy. or unfortunately, he lives really close. So Tom might be coming in on Saturday to help whenever he needs a therapy. Huh, yeah. I, no, honey, I don't need therapy. I want to be enlightened. Oh, enlightened. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, we, this podcast, we show people what to do. So for the jumper this weekend, we want to share what we do. Obviously, I don't want to pot everything up for sale here. Uh, your, your cutting will be, sh we want to preserve the plant. Your cutting will arrive wrapped with moss on it, just so it won't get too um, dry. But obviously, I'm doing this for example, because I'm not going to wrap everything. All the one we just cut is still wet. So we'll leave it on. I'm just showing you as you get your um, jumper for 1250, it'll come like wrapping the moss. But obviously this is for sample. We will air dry these till Monday and then let all the wound that we just cut um, heal itself. Then we'll wrap it and send it out to everybody, whoever bought these. Question. You have a question, Tom? Yeah. Do you treat it with any tool like uh, um, we don't. So well, Tom was asking, we do you treat it with anything no, like fungicide? We, we don't treat it with anything because there's nothing to be treated. These are just cakey that we broke off. It's very healthy. Um, yeah, we will treat it with something if there is a problem. Um, this we're just showing people what to do when we obviously had a wild plant with a whole bunch of cakey. This is what we broke off. People usually don't know what to do. I mean, I learned something from Auntie today. She just went and whack it off, yeah. and I'll be like, yeah. try and carefully take it off. But she's like, no, the other stuff we trash, right? So again, is when you do a division, when you have a wound open, um, there's back in the days, you know, when you had those black tar spray from the trees, you could use that to spray, but nobody's in a hurry anymore. So just let it air dry. And then um, when it's all dry, and when we go out on shipping for this jumper, and we're putting these out for 1250, then we'll wrap it. So it won't get um, so dehydrated. So we'll mill it out like this. She's like, oh, this is sample. Okay, kind of like Auntie. Kind of, yeah, we, yeah, we don't really want to send it out as a bare root just yeah, like that, and then kind of, 
we, we still want it to protect it, and when you get to it, when you get it, it'll be still nice and healthy. Then you'll take your time to pot it into your medium. And we had, yeah, and these will be good for these too. Yeah, um, I, I made an offer for these. Norman brought these in for ourselves, but then I think we could share it with our podcast. This is pine from Asia. It comes with a hook already. So you can melt on both sides. Those are really neat. You can melt on both sides. And it depends on what kind of dendrobium this, it could be melted this way. Because they'll be like, um, like the, yes. So it depends. Uh, if you have a flat wall, you obviously only use one side. If you have a lot of people in Florida just hanging on a tree, you can use both sides. And these are nice pine and they come in Asia, from Asia and they have the hook already for you. So I offer these and then we offer these. This is why we use outside our 24-7 oh yeah, garden. Yeah. Um, ours, we started selling these because people know we use this. Ours has been out there for at least five, six years. And these are very heavy coated wire. So we have these outside, we just hang on the, on the fans and all of our Thaley are blooming in 24-7 outdoor LA. So anyway, so this is my little pre-show today um, on how to do you cakey and then we'll come and we'll have a label and tape it. No tape, you wanna put it inside? No, label. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 so the label. Do you want to show that if you want to put out the wood, how you want to do it? Do you use the fish wax? Fish wax, yeah. 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 Um, we will do a little demonstration today on how to repot phalaenopsis, but for more in depth about how to you, how to repot a phalaenopsis, is going to be um, posted on the Phil Fanatic Fanatics. Facebook page, which is a nonprofit and it's um, a membership page only. And it's th we're we're doing this as a members benefit. Yes, exactly. So, so it's it's free for all members. That yeah, have joined to get this information to, to start supporting our nonprofit. So uh, Eric will do an ex experiment a little bit on the on how to repot a fail. So yeah, your your dendrobium will come like this with a label. Is that the right size? Or is this for example? <laughs> this is the Mizuma. Nice. Oh. Oh yeah, that's a real name. <laughs> that auntie just pulled one for example. <laughs> yeah, this is the name. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I don't know if people are like, that's not the right name. What color is it? Oh, it's going to be a hybrid, I think. But anyway, so Eric's going to come on and he'll do a little quick demonstration, just a little bit as a taste. And the, for the rest of it, you will see it on Phil Fanatic's uh, Facebook page, which is members only. So we encourage everybody to join our nonprofit the nonprofit goes straight to the uh, scholarship for the students, which we just finished a scholarship, right? I will give Eric the... Thank you. Thank you for this, um, Jeff, our wireless speaker now. Mic. Oh, <laughs> you want to take mine? Hi, hi. My name is Eric Fang. For the new people, welcome. And I represent, of course, Norman's Orchids as well as well Orchids.com. And today, uh, what prompted me to appear today is because we would like to answer a, a question from our member: that how to repot um, auto bloom phalaenopsis. So. I find some example from the nursery, so just to do some demonstration. So, I got a few plants that are in different stages of need to be a, to need to out for our attention. So this, of course, is a out of bloom, fine abscess with good roots, but a lot of arrow roots, and I think that's this is what the main question our member asked on Facebook, oh, on e uh, email support. So instead of uh, just, she requests for a write-up, I say, well, why don't I just do a video demonstration, be much thorough and share to everybody. This is some of the violacea 
breathing. And you can see this plant is probably flying for the past few years, judging from these old spike. And these are all sequential flower. So you can see each scar here is actually a flower. So this been probably been flower for the past years and it just still keep going though. So, so this plant probably haven't been repotted for the past two years, if not three or four. So really, maybe this is the time you want to decide whether you want to keep the plant or you want to keep the flower. So certainly there's a different way of approaching this uh, problem or issues. So we'll talk about that in details. I'm sure some, some plants are getting neglected, for example, like this one right here. Still put these, it's not really bad, but it's just kind of deteriorate due to um, not repotting uh, this plant. And since uh, the original leaves are actually the exposed roots right here. So how do we attack this, um, repot this plant? And that's a big, like it's gonna be a big uh, issue. And I'm sure hopefully you guys, in one of your collection, you might have something like this that we can approach this, uh, how to resolve this problem. This is a species. Uh, if you go right next to the window, they tend to go towards the light so you can see it's going out of bound for sure. However, the root's still good. So how do we repot this plant? Do we, you can either put it in the same pot or uh, still treat it as a pot plant or we can mount this because it's a species. So we approach this, so uh, find a solution and might possibly share how I will approach it. So to answer the member's question, we'll use this as an example to how to repot your out of bound roots and still have very healthy root system. And we'll use that as an example. So for the new the newbies, the new members uh, who are uh, appreciating this uh, fine hobby, uh, for to repot a plant, uh, we need some essentials. And the rest, I'll, I'll go over the, the essentials, then the rest is, could be lux luxury, okay? Commercially, lately, uh, for the past 10, 15 years, commercially we use moss now. A moss has its advantage. Once you understand how to water this, the, using this material, um, they hold water much longer. So very perfect for our dry climate in California, Arizona, places like this. And uh, certainly in, in a tropic area where you get a lot of water, then you probably want to use more something like a rock or maybe more chorus, coarse material used like, like bark. And uh, this is just a suggestion. Whatever works in your region, use whatever you like, okay? But in terms of repotting, in pretty much the same principle, okay? So, so that's, these are one is essential, of course. Then size of the pot, okay? In the 80s and the 70s, before, Orchids are all commercialized. We usually just use pots like this, azalea pot, whether it's four inch or six inch or three, two inch, whatever, but it certainly is not clear. And in the classic way to repot orchids in the 80s and 70s, usually in California anyway, we only use bark, okay? But so are they not good now? No, they're still good. It's just that uh, there's, a, there's a certain advantage of using a clear pot like this compared to this. This is readily available. This is very harder to find and they cost a lot more money, I think. And certainly, it has a better design for high drainage. You can see it's very porous. And on the bottom of this pot that we carry on, online, also in the nursery, it's actually, uh, it is an indentation that's pushed up so the water, when you water, it will never sit on the water, uh, on the bottom. So there's always- Oh, is that what that's for? Yes, yes, yes. I gotcha, I never knew right? that. Right, okay. So it's not like, like the wine bottle that you, they have that push up tap in the bottom, but this actually have a, has its purpose. Uh, do I like this? Well, it depends on the medium that you use. If you tend to overwater your plant, this is a good choice. 
in California, when we get dry, then we I prefer this. So they hold the water a lot longer. So it's all up to your, how you take care of your plant, how you water your plant, and also the climate that you, you have. So you pick your own poison, <laughs> okay? So this is one of the essential, okay, pots. Now, let's talk about how I prep my plant before I repot my plants, okay? I will usually want to hydrate my plant first. So in preparation the day or two days before, I will probably get myself a bucket of water. Yeah, everybody have a bucket of water, right? So roughly maybe a gallon or two gallons in this container. I want to hydrate my plant first. So, and also at the same time, because we're going to repot the plant and we might maybe even cut into the plants, okay? So, it is, before I well, hydrate, at the same time, I'll use my fertilizer, right? So I will not go full strength. One teaspoon per gallon of water is what I would suggest on the label. So I will probably put half a tablespoon per gallon of water, okay? Mix it well, it's a powder form. Mix it well, and add, it's, Mega Thrive, I'm sure, please chime in. Whoever uses Mega Thrive has got re result chime in. Fantastic material. This is really definitely perk up the plant, um, get the plant ready for a journey of maybe a big surgery or maybe going through some um, surgery or something like that. Mega Thrive, six tablespoons per gallon of water. I will use three tablespoons per gallon of water and mix it up. Mix it up right here, okay? And I will just soak my plant first. This is how I prep my plants. I get them hydrated, fertilized, ready for repotting. Okay? And that's what I would do. Okay. So these are secondary. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. But that's what I do. Okay? But I think by using those, it gives you the best chance. Oh, oh yeah, not stressing and them out. I think out. the plant will recover a lot faster. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's for it, sure, it, right? It sets them up for success if you use that. Yes. So that's a uh, accessories. Uh, certainly, when we repot our plant, we definitely sometimes we have to trim the leaves. We have to cut into the the old root system. So we definitely, I think this is one of the essential too, and a good cutting tool, right? So a torch that you can get. Right, from your hardware store, right? Before you torch, you always, you, before you cut, you always have to sterilize your tool, very common sense, okay? So, your potting medium, your pot, your sterilization and cutting tool, your essential tools. This is my tips of the day. That's why, how I treat my plant before I repot my plant. Hydrate them, fertilize them first, but have suggested solution. Okay? So. So, Sonny is saying, I thought you can't mix Mega Thrive and fertilizer. It's, I was going to cover that too, <laughs> yes. But remember, I'm only, only doing doing this at a time. So just to save some time. Right. I, certainly, I don't want to do it twice. Right. One fertilizer and one. Only this time, but, but the right procedure is separate them. So we don't know what, what will happen. Okay, so to answer our member's question, she did, I don't know if you can share the pictures, but uh, she did, actually she did a very good job on her collection and uh, her plant is much more robust than this one. I just so happened I find this one has more aerial roots, a little bit more exaggeration, so to show how I approach this, okay? Oh, you don't have moss here? Ready, ready prepped? Excuse me, so. So assuming we already hydrate the plant and fertilize. Put this in the safe place. The ID is very important, of course, in our hobby. Squeeze the pot a little bit. Loosen it up and you can pretty much pour it out. So you can see it's actually pretty good, yes? So. Commercially, oh, well, traditionally, when we were in the 70s, we used to go to a place called 
Stewart, or I could say San Gabriel. And that's our weekend destination. So back then, they'll tell you to get rid of all these old medium, okay, old medium. And then probably even cut the roots in half and repot. So imagine a plant as happy as, as clam, and all of a sudden they get amputated in half. So it'll take a long time for them to recover. So we find out that, and I'm sure they've done a lot of study in Asia, that they're all growing in moss now. And what they do is, when they find a, group, a plant like this with good roots, they don't tear this apart. They just add new, part, new, new materials only and shift the plant to a bigger container. Now the good, now the good question is this, how big? What's the next size, right? Some people think this is just perfect, right balanced. Yes? No? I don't know. What do you think? Or this? Which one is better? Anybody want to answer? No? Okay. So, oh no. The size of the loop, size of the pot is dictated by the size of the root ball. And you won't, usually you only want to increase by one inch increment. You can push to two inch increment, but usually I like to stay a bit smaller. So they, I can kind of gauge that, let's say, I don't, I probably average I water water once a week or water once every two weeks. If you go too big in the winter time, they're gonna suffer because they don't know dry too quickly and they hold water for too long, they might not be too happy in the winter time. So going big is, is, is not what we like to do in OK community. So anyway, so this is about three inches. So up to four inches is ideal. You get one inch of free space all around and this is probably the decent size for it, okay? And if you find a pot like this, and it's still holding, wa holding water a lot longer than usual, then you certainly you can still add some packing peanuts to decrease the amount of volume so the plant have a chance to match how you water your, how to match your watering schedule. That's what I meant. Does that make any sense? Do you okay. just put the peanuts on the bottom? Yes, that's pretty. Uh, you uh, don't, just basically you don't, you don't mix the, it in, right? You just no. put them all at the bottom. Yeah. To decrease the volume of the medium that we use to match how fast, how, how often you always water your plant. Because the packing peanuts are not going to hold any moisture. It's just going to go right through. That's right. right? We just want to decrease the volume. Right. Good question. Yes. Okay. So. The condition, my, this example is conditioned because this is a good root system, very healthy aerial roots. I don't see any bad roots, maybe about, oh, I found one, okay? Let me just peel it out, that's it. Right, these are your brand new. And the moss looks good. And the moss, oh. So the, maybe I did not finish what I was trying to tell you. So commercially in Asia, we basically, with a plant like this with healthy roots, we basically just add new moss. We don't tear this apart. Shift it to a bigger container, that's it. Certainly, uh, the next segment, we'll, we'll go through, well, how do we do it if we don't have, we have a whole bunch of dead roots? So that's, a, that's, that's gonna take longer. But this um, example of class, it's just basically just wanna show my my member how to repot her orchids. So basically we just, now certainly every time you repot with a root like this, there's no, it's just impossible not to damage the roots, but it was still okay, they're still okay, all right? So I just wrapped it around. Using the moss, like this. Now, if I'm choosing this as a five inch pot, what do I do? I create a bowl size, um, size of a root ball, maybe about six or seven inches. All 
right? It's just right like this, like this. We'll give it a really balanced medium all around. Okay. And get bigger, even bigger. If I can, my hand can hold it. But normally you would not pop this big, right? Well, this, as I say, it's di di dictated by the size of the root ball. So if it's a four inch root ball, that means what? You can go up to as high as six inch, as high as six inch. Go smaller is okay, okay? Put it right in the center. Okay, now it's still very loose, yes? So please just find yourself an old toothbrush or whatever you have, an old pen, okay? Then you start compressing it down. Okay? How much compression, you ask? Did I hear that? <laughs> anyway. Yes, how much oh, compression? How much compression? How do I show it on, on the video? Jeff, how do I show it on the video? Okay, so the idea is after you feel this, compress it about halfway, or we'll, we'll add more. You don't want to compress too far. That's right. Because you add water, you want to get bigger. <laughs> so how much, but you don't want to have compress too hard. What's not too hard? Right? So I just want to demonstrate. So again, right? Compression, compress this medium until you lift the plant up, the, the pot doesn't fall out. That's a basic. The rest is up to you how much more, right? So, and then halfway, tidy this up with your finger. And then the rest, I fill this up with more mass, somewhat more loosely, and I'll demonstrate. Why do I, why do I like a little bit more compressed a little bit? Why? Because when we water our plant, it's gonna slow down, the water drains out. So it had a, the moss has a chance, this looks like a reservoir for the, the medium to absorb the water. Otherwise you'll be running through water left and right and still So if it's not compressed, getting really the water goes through more slowly? Is that what you're saying? Correct. So then the, the roots bottom. can absorb in the area of the pot where it's compressed. That's so right. that's why you compress the bottom and because the rest that's where of, most of the roots are. Yes, and then the rest of the void space, then we just pack it up loosely. Fair enough? That make any sense? So, and certainly you, don't want, you want to tuck in all the roots in. You just tie, tie it up. And you will never overbury the plant. So it's very important, the center, the crown, you gotta go below the oldest leaf, not like this. It'll cause a lot of fungus problem. Clear this out area, this center here. Go below your original leaf. Yes, like this. Not here, not here, not here, right? You cannot breathe. Below your nose, below the crown here, first leaf, like this. And you'll be okay. And since we already hydrate the plant, yeah? And we started with a wet moss. You put this in the shadiest part of your house and just leave it there for a week. Don't water again. No water, period, no. It's all hydrated, right? No water. Like this, in a shady spot. For a week, and then, then you, you check. If it's dried out, then you start water again. That's it. Any other questions? I hope I answered your, my members' uh, question. And you, she, she did a good job. Oh, no, he did a good job. Anyway, so like this. And this is done. So the next segment will attack a problem, uh, how to groom an established plant, 
with all these root system and I'll go, go through my thinking of how to approach whether to keep this or, or not or keeping it and then repot. And then how to maybe amputate this plant. Amputate, yes, that, that's what I said. Amputate this plant and re, repot this for the longer term. And this one right here, it's a species. It's a species, uh, Tetrapus alba, right? And this, uh, this looks like a good candidate for mounting, yes? All right, so there you have it. Thank you very much. So I'll see you next time. If yeah? you guys want to join us, we're going to go over to Fell Fanatics, and we're going to do a live segment there, which will stay recorded for the members to see. Yes. So we're going to cut it off here, and if you want to head over to Fell Fanatics, we'll come on there in the next five minutes or so, and you guys can see uh, a more in-depth as to repotting Phalaenopsis. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.